In Adobe InDesign, as in many other programs, tables help us organize some kinds of information. Creating, importing, and formatting tables is fairly easy, and there are only a couple of requirements we need to watch out for. First thing, we usually want to create a text box. The table building feature will actually do this for us if we don't, but having one ready tells the table exactly where to land. So we can select the Type tool, position on the page, and drag as needed. Often we'll have a place where we know we need a table, so easy enough. Next is to create the table itself. The table menu is the normal place to start, so we go to the table menu, to the Create or Insert table command up top, and bring up the dialog box. The style or formatting we'll talk about in a moment. The main thing here is to specify the number of rows and the number of columns. If we need header or footer rows, we can spin those up in the lower controls here. We'll stick with what we've got for now and click OK. We can easily drag through cells to select columns or rows or both. Just start in the middle of one cell, drag to the middle of whichever other cell. This will let us adjust row height, column width, and other things in the table's setup. We can go to the table menu again, to the cell options, and then rows and columns, and we can go ahead and make the adjustments we want. If, for example, we want the row height to be a little greater, we can just spin it on up until we get to whatever height we want, let's say half an inch. We can then click OK. We're constrained by the size of the text box that the table is set in, but otherwise we can fiddle as needed. If it's a little too big, again, table menu, cell options, rows and columns, and spin the number down until we get to see all of our rows and columns once more. Click OK. We can drag the cell borders manually too if we wish. Just put the cursor exactly on whichever edge, whether horizontal or vertical, hold down the mouse button and drag. If we want to make changes to the table as a whole, we can go to the Table Options dialog in the same menu. Once again, Table Menu, Table Options, and we could click Table Setup for starters. We can then click the choices at the top to modify Table Setup overall, row strokes, column strokes. The Fill section can be a big help, as the alternating pattern drop-down here will allow us to do striped or banded rows or columns. If, for example, I select every other row, I can then change the tint for the alternating stripes here, let's say from black to yellow. If I want to make the tint a little more intense, spin it up to whatever number, let's say 50. The stripes can make it easier to follow data in wider or taller tables, a pretty normal thing these days. Of course, click OK once we're finished. One item I haven't mentioned, but which is a big help, is the preview checkbox, which you can find in most of the dialogs throughout InDesign. It's normally near the bottom left or right of the dialog. Let me bring the dialog box back up here, uh, alternating fills, for example. And uh, here we are, bottom left or right of most of the dialog boxes. Turning it on for every box lets you see the changes as you make them. I always use the preview. It's better than undo sometimes because there are a few things which are harder to undo efficiently. This way you don't have to do that as much. Merging cells, if we need to, is very simple. We drag from the middle of whichever cell to the middle of whichever other cell. Go back up to the table menu as we've already seen and about halfway down click on Merge Cells. We do this so we can create de facto column and row labels, titles, etc., as in some Excel tables, which, by the way, we can even import to save time if we've got a batch of data already set up in Excel. Let me go ahead and do a quick demonstration of that. I'll switch to my uh, selection tool, and I'll shorten the text box here just a bit so I keep it out of the way. Click a blank spot so I don't replace one with another, and then go to File to Place. If I already have my data set up in Excel, I can just go ahead and select it. I want to make sure, though, that I turn on the Show Import Options check mark here, because then when I click on Open, 
I can actually specify which sheet, which range of cells, etc., before I bring it in. This gives me a little bit of latitude. Click OK. Maneuver the cursor to where I want to drop the data. Give a click. Voila. This way the program will bring the info in as a table, as I said, rather than as a bunch of tab-separated text. Lastly, as for styles, if I format a table and or its cells, and I want to save that appearance and use it in other tables, I can uh, switch to my type tool, make sure I click in the table so the program knows what I'm looking to do. I can go to the window menu, slide down to the uh, styles command here, and I'll go ahead and click on uh, table styles. The table already has its formatting done, so having clicked in the table, I can go to the bottom of table styles, click the new style button, double click my new style so I can give it a name. Click OK. Ready to use. Click in whichever other table, click on the style, and it's done.